Hello, NSS staff out there. Welcome to the 2023 Summer Food Service Program Training. My name is Freddie Bonilla. I am in NSS. I've been here for a good number of years, um, and I am going to give you your summer training today. All right, so let's get serious. All right. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. We can go get started. Um, if you've made it this far, then clearly you're interested in working the summer program. So as you may see, this is an application and training all in one, all right? So you'll get everything you need right here today, get you trained up, get your application submitted, show that you're interested in working a program. This will go to our staffing team. Um, and this will have you this will have you uh, ready to get assigned to a program, okay? So let's dive right into it. Today's agenda, right? We're gonna go over some daily responsibilities, what it looks like on a day to day um, at the summer program. All right, as you guys know, these programs kind of roll around really quickly. You got a six week, maybe a four week, sometimes an eight week program. Um, but either way, you know, it happens, it happens fast. You got to stay on it on a daily basis. There's a lot of tasks that we're going to go over of expectations and responsibilities that you would need to do every day. Okay. Then there's, we're going to go over your first day jitters, right? Your first day tasks, right? How to get around the building, let people know you're there, you're there to help. We're going to go over some accountability. Um, and what that looks like, everything from documentation and reimbursable meals, we're going to go over field trip meals, all right? Not only how to prepare field trip meals, but also how to communicate with central office about field trips, letting us know when these field trips are going to take place. Um, we know that a lot of times they come to you last minute, uh, but we're really hoping to get it, um, get ahead of the ball and just start asking the question and getting some information from these program coordinators. Proper food handling and documentation, right? So everything you need to know, all of the HACCP rules about how you handle your food, how you temp your food, and all the documentation that goes along with that. Um, serving reimbursable meals, right? Only serving reimbursable meals, offering the correct amount of items and components, and allowing the child to take the correct number of items or components to make that reimbursable meal. Meal account entry, so mosaic front of the house. Um, payroll services. We're going to get into uh, the food production worksheets or the mosaic back of the house, uh, where you're also going to find your menus and your recipes. And then we'll give you a couple of tips for staying safe, you know, anything from natural disasters to um, a fire, uh, you know, so just, just kind of touching base about emergency contingencies, okay? Daily responsibilities, right? What do you do? You report. You report to work at your scheduled time. Once you get done with this training, um, you'll be on the list to get an assignment letter. Your assignment letter will tell you your scheduled work time. Please make sure you're there on your scheduled work days. Okay. Some programs run Monday through Thursdays. Others run Monday through Friday. That'll come on your assignment letter. Be sure that you're swiping in and out. You know, use your CPS ID or your CPS ID number to swipe in and out at the school. Change into a clean uniform at work, all right? You don't want to come to work in your uniform. You want to change at work. You can wear one of the school foods, uh, food hero shirts or any of the other NSS t-shirts are acceptable, okay? Uh, check your email daily, okay? Most people are not on the phones anymore. Most people send communication through email, okay? This department is very email driven. A lot of things that will be sent to you will come to your email, be sure that you check it daily, multiple times a day. If you can't, at least check it in the morning before you get started and then check it in the evening before you leave or in the afternoon in this case. Prepare and serve menu items according to the recipes. So we'll keep continuing to tell you to print and follow your recipes, okay? Look at your food production worksheets. Follow your food production worksheets. If you're following the menu, you're following the food production worksheets and you're printing and following your recipes, there's very little that can go wrong when preparing your food, okay? Follow all the food safety sanitation practices. We'll go into some HACCP practices. 
Record food and equipment temperatures on the appropriate logs. So you have a, you'll have a log for food. You'll have a log for your equipment. Um, you'll have a sanitation log. So there's a, a bunch of logs going on, and we'll definitely expect you to do this on a daily basis, okay? Complete food production worksheets in, in Mosaic. Enter this in back of the house on a daily basis. I can continue to say on a daily basis because if you fall behind on this, it is so hard to catch up, all right? So day one, shine bright, get in there, get your paperwork in order, and make sure that you follow that trend throughout the rest of the summer, okay? Um, you're going to go ahead and enter your meal counts in Mosaic. POS terminals are not used, so we mentioned the front of the house. So we'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to go ahead and enter those meals. Leave the lunchroom keys in the main office, right? This may not be your school, so somebody's leaving keys for you. Make sure you leave those back in the main office at the end of the day. You can retrieve them the next day. All right, how do we break the ice? How do we get into action? Let's go over a couple of first day tasks, okay? Introduce yourself to the person in charge. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm here to help with food, okay? Um, let me know what you need. Let me know your ex estimated enrollment. Let me know about those field trips, right? I, I want to say that they should give you a 48-hour notice, but sometimes you'll be lucky if you get it in 48 minutes. Our point is that we need you to communicate it to us and your FSD and FSM at, at summer food services at cps.edu mailbox, letting us know that these field trips are coming up. All right. So if you get there on the first day and you say, hey, do you guys plan to take any field trips over the summer? They might already have it laid out. So you're ahead of the ball. You shoot an email off before the end of the day. Hey, I found out that they're going to have field trips on this date and this date and this date. Boom, send it right over. If you know the locations, that's nice. If you know how many students are going, even better. But ideally, as long as you can tell us the date and your school name, we'll be able to keep record of that, okay? You want to ask the administration and the program coordinators, where will meals be served, okay? Ideally, they'd come into your cafeteria, but if not, maybe they're being served in a classroom. Maybe it's a grab-and-go station. Also, make sure that one of the branches or the modules is not being utilized, okay? So you want to find all this out on the first day, inform your FSD and FSM so that we can go ahead and correct our request so that we can get the appropriate number of staff at that school, okay? Be sure that you bring your original sanitation license with you every day. Wallet size is acceptable, but make sure you have the original. Make sure that when you get there on the first day, you're able to log into your computer, okay? Log into your NSS computer with the CPS credentials that were given to you throughout the school year, right? And make sure that when you do get into the system, you go to Google and you go to the Mosaic website and you go to the MyNSS website. Make sure that all of these tools that you have learned to use are available and at your fingertips, okay? We know you're gonna need front of the house. We know you're gonna need back of the house, all right? If for some reason you don't have access to some of these sites or you don't have access into the computer, please go ahead and open up a ticket with the service desk. That's at 339.25. Okay, you're gonna go ahead and press option number four. Be sure that you display all your required signs. This may not be your school. So as you walk in, you may notice they don't have an injustice for all poster. Go ahead and reach out to your FSD, FSM. Say, hey, I'm working at this school over the summer. There's currently not a poster here. Could you bring me one? Okay. Ready, set, go. Let's be prepared, okay? So be sure that you have calibrated thermometers. That's a big one. We expect you to take all these temperatures. We want to make sure that you have a thermometer that is working, that is reading 32 degrees, give or take two, two degrees. Okay, we'll go over that shortly as well. Be sure that you have all the equipment that you need. Be sure that you have all your food temperature logs and your daily meal count forms, your sanitation log. Be sure that you have menu, recipes, food production worksheets, small wares. And once again, the required signs that we talked about, injustice for all poster, no food removed. Meals are for children only, right? Besides the NSS staff, we do not feed adults. This may not be the school that you traditionally work at. So you want to be sure that you know who the FSD, FSM, and DM of those schools are. Be sure that you know their contact information, phone numbers, email addresses, okay? 
Be sure that you've already come across finding out what the correct meal service times are and the estimated enrollment. Once again, on the assignment letter, we will give you the best, to the best of our knowledge, what we received from the request. But ideally, it's on you to make that communication at the school level between our lunchrooms and the administrative staff to make sure we're operating at the correct times, on the correct days, for the correct dates. Accountability, right? So getting right into accountability, meal counts are taken at the point of service. Meal counts are taken at the point of service, okay? I don't think I can repeat that enough. We have plenty of issues with meals not being taken at the point of service, okay? So the point of service is at the end of a line, at the end of a table, at the end of the hall, wherever you're serving, where you are able to witness a reimbursable meal being taken, all of the food is in front of you, and then you're able to tally on your grid sheet, your daily meal count form, that that meal has been taken. That's the point of service. That's where you want to stand. That's where you want to have your LRA stand, okay? That's what we want to do. Things like counting leftover bags or using attendance are completely unacceptable, all right? We cannot do meal counts that way. That will lead us to not being able to claim those meals for reimbursement, which is a lot bigger of a problem. Counts are recorded on the SFSP 2023 daily meal count form only, okay? This is the only form. You have some forms left over from last year, throw them out. Use the back of scratch paper, something, but do not use them for this year. There's only one form. I'm going to show it to you shortly, and it's the one that's labeled 2023 SFSP daily meal count form, okay? You're going to use a separate daily meal count form for whatever meal service you have. So if you have breakfast and lunch, you'll have two different daily meal count forms on a daily basis. Now, if you only serve breakfast, of course, you'll only have one, okay? Same thing with just doing lunch. Now, if you do breakfast, lunch, and lunch stop, you will have three daily meal count forms on a daily basis, okay? You'll input your breakfast count, you'll take your lunch and your lunch stop grid sheets, combine them, and enter that count into the system, okay? Actually, we show you how to enter your lunch stop count and your lunch count uh, coming up here shortly, so you'll see. NSS staff meals must be accounted for on the daily meal count form, okay? Other schools, other school personnel are not entitled to a meal, okay? So a teacher comes by, they think they can buy a meal. Unfortunately, we don't have meals for sale and we do not feed other adults outside of the lunchroom free meals, okay? Whomever is actually recording the meals on this form is the one who must sign and date it. So let's take a look at the sample form, okay? Here you go. Let's look at it and break it down section by section and let you know how to go ahead and fill this out. First and foremost, you're gonna go ahead and fill out that top portion. Guess what? For the most part, you're gonna be at a school and their school name, Oracle number and address is not going to change, even their phone number, right? So those four fields, if you'd like, one of the work harder, not smarter tips is, go ahead and fill them out once and make several copies of this form before you go on and start to put in the serving date, okay? Once you do that, you can just go ahead and use this for the remainder of the summer without having to write in the first top fields. And it'll ensure that you don't forget to put in one of those fields. Be sure that you circle one of the days of the week. As stated earlier, you would use one of these daily meal count forms for each particular meal type. So that's why you see the box for breakfast, one for lunch and one for lunch stop. You can go ahead and check or X or slash in front of the in, inside of that box to notify us of which program this sheet represents. Okay, now you're going to go ahead and slash the boxes at the point of service, right? Only after the student receives their full reimbursable meal. It's ideal that you just use slashes, okay? Like shown here. Some people like X's, some people like check marks, that's fine. What's not acceptable is a line going all the way across 
or a bunch of shade marks that we can't really tell which one distinction between the other, okay? So once you do that, you use a slash, you use an X, you want to be sure that the number of slashes that you have equates to the total number of meals served in the box below it. Plenty of times you may see that one additional student comes, they slash number 11, but they don't change the total meal served to 11. Okay, you want to be sure that you're always catching that. If at any given point, there's a, there's a child who's coming to receive a meal and there is nothing available for them, you're going to go ahead and use this section here, which says number of children requesting a meal after all available meals have been served. We definitely don't want this happening often. So this will help us to forecast uh, for future meals. We do work on a two week schedule for SFSP. So this will really help us to understand which items are a little more popular than others and allow us to forecast the correct amount. Record the number of adult meals served in the food service employee tracking section, okay? In this section, you're going to do the number of breakfast, if this is a breakfast grid form, or the number of lunches, if it's a lunch count form. Once again, the signature and the date does not happen to fall on the manager unless the manager is the one who is doing the meal count. So it is the person who is actually at the POS doing the meal count who should go ahead and sign and date. Sounds simple, right? It's just so easy breezy. Why am I constantly talking about this? You guys have heard it all before, right? Yet somehow, some of these easy things just go unnoticed. They go, they go, and people just, I don't know what happens. They show up the first day and they just don't remember where a POS is, okay? Let's go over some of the actual comments that we recorded from one of our, from some of our reviews by last year's monitors during the summer. Things such as no one at the point of service. As we monitor, as sending out one of my monitors, that's an immediate fail, okay? Had to explain to staff that the number needs to be taken at the point of sale. Not marking the students at the point of service. Meal counts are marked after all the students take their meals. No grid sheets. Site manager doesn't have access to the computer to print paperwork, and the computer is now locked. Those are all things that should have been addressed on day one, just like we stated in the previous slides here. Check your computer, raise that flag, Tell, your, tell somebody, FSD, FSM, Summer Food Service Mailbox, hey, I'm having issues. We get you fixed and get you running within a day or two, okay? This should never go on to where a monitor could have been out at that school a week or two later and reporting that there's no grid sheets being used. The monitor doesn't have access. By doing this training right now, we're ensuring that you're all receiving this information. So we expect you guys to use it. Now, why should I care? Why should you care, right? Well, guess what? This, this SFSP, as well as all of our other programs, are state-mandated programs that we have to follow and stay in compliance with federal and state regulations, all right? If proper meal counting procedures are not followed, CPS can easily not receive reimbursement for the meals that we served. If we don't receive reimbursement, that's a lot less money to spend operating programs such as the summer meal service program and that equals a lot fewer options for supporting our students and communities as well which is one of the biggest parts of us doing this job field trip guidelines right so you want to ensure that you have what you need in order to keep the food at a proper temperature, okay? That does fall on you that you have the correct coolers, the correct blankets, the correct ice blankets out there. And if not, you're going to need to contact your FSD and FSM, right? Make sure you check the lids, check the seals. Make sure that these coolers and blankets are operational. Your food needs to be sent out under 41 degrees and arrive under 41 degrees. And by the time of it being served, should still remain under 41 degrees, okay? For field trips, you want to go ahead and email the information on your school, the date of the trip, the location of the trip, and the number of the children, okay? 
Once again, there's that there's that mailbox, summer food service at cps.edu. And your FSD and FSM is your main contact person throughout the summer as well. As I stated earlier, we understand sometimes you are notified late of a field trip. You are notified the day before, the morning of. We just expect you to let us know as soon as you find out. All right, some guidelines continuing on field trips, right? You want to provide the field trip planner with two things. The first one being the daily meal count form, right? Be sure that on that daily meal count form, you are writing field trip on the form, okay? A copy of the And Justice for All poster. Black and white is fine. If you don't have a full-size poster, that's okay, all right? You just want to go ahead and make a copy and do the black and white. But at the same time, let your FSD know. They should have extras and should be able to provide you with one. When sending out field trip meals, do not assume that the meals prepared is the count and the count for that day are the same, okay? You can't send out 25 meals. Let's say they don't bring you back a daily meal count form. You can't just assume that they serve 25, okay? You get with that program coordinator. You say, hey, do you know how many counts were actually served? I really need you to fill out the daily meal count form. Get it corrected the first time so that we can get this done. OK, and then you would you would have this paperwork in order for yourself. You want to be sure that when you receive back that paper, that daily meal call form, because they're doing it right. They're listening to you. You gave them a quick training on what to do, how to understand a reimbursable meal, even though it's all bagged up and ready to go. If the kid just takes the bag, it's reimbursable. They need to check that box. Right. You get that count back. You take that total count and you add it to your in-service line. You had some kids who stayed back. Some programs who stayed back, only the fourth graders went on a field trip, but everybody else was back at the school. You take those two counts and add them up before you put it into front of the house mosaic, okay? You must have the proper colding, cold holding equipment to execute the field trip menu, right? Once again, don't have those ice blankets. Your coolers may not be holding temperature. Let your FSD or FSM know right away. Summer food handling, okay? All food must be prepared according to the recipe. Again, there it is. Printing, following recipe, okay? In a timely manner, provide your FSD or FSM with your food and supply needs, okay? You will have order dates. You will have load-in dates. You will have delivery dates. Be sure that you're on top of all these dates, that you're on top of what needs to be ordered, and that you're getting the correct quantity for your students, okay? In diverse learner situations, if a summer school set has diverse learners, we may have to have pureed food, okay? You may already be familiar with that. These kind of cases will be handled on a one case-by-case -case basis, okay? If you find out information about food needing to be pureed or about hot meals being requested because of diverse learners, then just inform your FSD and FSM. They'll reach out to us at NSS and we'll get it figured out for you, okay? All HACCP procedures must be followed and documented on a daily basis, right? So as we're getting through this training, we're continuously spelling out for you the key components to complete on a daily basis to get you to where you need to be completing your job accurately, okay? What is HACCP and what is HACCP documentation, all right? Well, in its bare form, HACCP, when executed correctly, will tell the story of the food that we are serving from the time that we received it to how we stored it to how we prepped it to how we held it to the point to how we served it okay when all of this documentation is in order it just proves that we are doing our job correctly okay so let's review a little bit of HACCP documentation starting with our thermometers Okay, every morning you want to go ahead and get you some ice cold water. Put your thermometer in there. Make sure it's not touching any of the sides or the bottom. Okay, that thermometer should be reading at 32 degrees plus or minus two degrees, which means what? It could read 30, 31, 32, 33, or 34. Anything else and your thermometer is not calibrated, it's not working correctly. Right, you would reach out to your FSD, FSM. You would discard that thermometer, let them know you need a new one, okay? 
make sure that you're recording the results of these daily uh, verifications on your weekly verification log. Continuing on with some other further HACCP actions, right? When you receive your delivery, what do you do, right? Big thing is make sure that everything you ordered actually came in. Check the quantities. Make sure that you're getting the appropriate number. Also, check for quality. And you have the right to refuse any product that may come in with ice crystals or mold, signs of contamination, maybe expired items. You have the right to go ahead and refuse that. Record the temperatures, right? Use your sanitized and verified thermometer from this morning and take some of the foods. Check them that they're reading at 41 degrees or under. If it's frozen items, they should be frozen solid. Products should be put away immediately after this process, right? So you've checked it. Make sure you go ahead and store it, process it, put it away. Rotate your stock using the first in, first out method, all right? That's very important. You don't want food going expired in your refrigerator, so make sure you get out what you got in first, and then you put in your new delivery behind that, all right? How do you properly temp a product, right? We ask you to record your temperatures, but we don't need you to start opening packages and checking the food. Just take two of the food packages, put them together, stick your thermometer in between, make sure that it's reading at 41 degrees or below, all right? For milk, you will have to open up the milk and discard. Open up the milks, put your thermometer in each type of milk, and record the temperature on your receiving logs. Continuing on with some further HACCP actions, more temp logs, your cooler, your freezer, your storeroom, okay? These temperatures should be, for a cooler, between 36 and 40 degrees. For a freezer, they need to maintain at zero degrees or below. Now, for a storeroom, store, storeroom, you guys are probably looking at me, looking at this, thinking 50 to 70 degrees. Dude, my school is like 90 degrees in the summer. It's hot. I understand some schools have issues with air conditioner, issue with ventilation. If this becomes a serious issue where your storage room may be causing issues to your food that's stored there, let your FSD, FSM, your operation specialist know right away. We can go ahead and try to move some things around, okay? We understand. We're just saying optimally, we would like to keep them at 70 degrees or under, okay? Never take out more product than required, right? Remember that 30-minute rule. If you can't prepare it in 30 minutes, then don't pull it out, okay? You must complete the cold production log daily, right? Go ahead and get those out. Make sure you're filling those out. How to properly hold your cold items, right? So in service, your holding temperature should be taken every 30 minutes, approximately, give or take a couple of minutes, right? Depending on your meal service times, but, but 30 minutes, okay? So you're operating for two hours. We should see four temperatures, okay? Cold food should be kept at or below 41 degrees, so you're constantly checking those temperatures and filling them out on your food cold production temperature log. Now, what do you know? Here's an example of the temp log, okay? For the items, you will have to go ahead and put that in. List all the items served for breakfast. List all the items served for lunch. The milk is already there for you, but the items that you are serving that day, you will have to write in. Again, with the school name and Oracle number, you may want to make copies of that so you're not stuck writing it in all the time. That's up to you. There are four temperature sections. Like I said, every 30 minutes, you go ahead and get your calibrated thermometer and you check those. And again, be sure that you're signing the forms on the bottom. Okay, it's very important that we take accountability for that. All right, let's talk about serving food, okay? Potable water should be offered where it is logistically possible, right? So what does that mean? If we have a water fountain in the cafeteria or right around in one of the close by hallways, this may not be necessary. But if you're in an area where there is no water immediately available, you may want to put out a water jug, okay? All meals this summer are going to be cold. There will be a few exceptions that we will handle on a case-by-case -case basis at diverse learner schools. 
offer versus serve is our planned implementation for menu. The goals of offer versus serve are that we decrease food waste and increase food choices, okay? If we're pre-bagging meals, we need to be sure that all the items included in the bag, except for the milk, right? So that the milk isn't in there causing condensation, breaking open the bags. That also helps to show that if it's a pre-bagged meal, what the items in the bag are already making up a reimbursable meal, okay? Then the child has the option to receive that milk or not. If your school wants to have more grab-and-go stations than there are employees, alert your FSD or FSM immediately, okay? We want to be able to address that right away. You can't take counts at the point of service if there isn't somebody there at the grab-and-go station. If you have leftovers, follow the standard procedures that you're using for your regular school year, okay? Now let's talk about a reimbursable breakfast, okay? Let's just keep it real simple here. At breakfast, we count items, not components, okay? The component requirement may consist of multiple items. For an example, a breakfast sandwich, which would be a grain and a meat-meat alternate, or there's also a yogurt parfait, right? Three food components are required for a reimbursable breakfast. It could be a serving of fruit or vegetable, a serving of grain or bread, your serving of milk, and an additional serving of fruit, vegetable, grain, bread, meat, meat alternate, okay? At least four different food items from the food components listed above must be offered in order for us to meet the offer versus serve for summer food service program, okay? Of those four items, a child must take three of them in order for it to be reimbursable, okay? That only leaves them the option to decline one food item. Allowable combinations for breakfast served on the line, right? Because if you're serving out of a bag, it's already in there. But serving the combinations off of a line, the child could take an entree, a fruit, and a milk, right? The child could take an entree, two different fruits, and a milk. Nothing stops the child from just taking two different fruits and a milk, even though there's two fruits, the same component, it's still three different items, two fruits and a milk, or an entree and two different fruits. If you're serving a bag breakfast, three food items must already be in the bag, making milk optional for that child, okay? This is the meaning that the students are not required to take milk. Either they can add it as part of their bag to a reimbursable meal, or they don't have to, and the bag itself is already a reimbursable meal, okay? Be sure you refer to your food production worksheet for the types of milk that should be offered. Now for lunch, it's a little bit different, okay? For lunch, we do count components and not items, okay? Four of the food components are required for a reimbursable lunch. A serving of meat, meat alternate, a serving of grain bread, two servings of fruit and vegetables, and one serving of milk at least five different food items from the food components listed above must be offered to the students in order for us to meet the offer versus serve in summer food service programming. Lunch offer versus serve requirements differ from breakfast in that a child must take at least three components rather than items, and a child is required to take an entree. A child may only decline up to two food items. However, the child must still have at least three components represented on their plate to be a reimbursable meal. For some examples, you could have an entree, fruit, and milk. In turn, that entree could be two items, then your fruit, then your milk. Four items, three entrees. I mean, three component, four components. Entree is your meat, meat alternate, and your grain, fruit, and milk. Requirement of three components, four items. Entree, fruit, vegetable, and milk. Entree and milk. That is still three. Entree, two different fruits, and milk. So students are required to select an entree, 
condiments never count as a required component, okay? If you're serving a bag lunch for whatever reason, that bag lunch would have to consist of three components, which is four of the items in the bag. Milk is then served outside of the bag and is optional for the student to take. Please be sure once again to refer to your food production worksheets for the types of milk that should be offered at lunch, okay? That may differ in breakfast and lunch. So just look at your food production worksheet. Computer access, okay? Now, when you get to your school on day one, we talk about checking the computer. You should be able to see a login screen like this, okay? If your computer is on this login screen, perfect. You go ahead and type your username and password, the same ones you have for your CPS credentials, okay? Another thing to remember is the instruct versus admin domain. If you're a school-based employee, you most likely have an instruct. If you're a pool employee, you most likely have an admin, okay? Your username is the same as your email address without the cps.edu part. So for example, I'm FD Bonilla. That is my username, okay? If for some other reason you come to a computer and it's signed into the instruct and you need to sign into admin, in the username section, you would put admin backslash FD Bonilla or whatever your username is along with your password and that'll get you logged in. If for some odd reason you get to the computer and it's not on this screen, then you'd wanna go to the bottom of the screen and select switch user. Okay, this is on the left-hand corner of the screen. This will allow you to follow the above directions um, because the screen will then pop up for you. Once you're logged in, you wanna go ahead and utilize your Google icon. These are usually on the desktop. If not, it can be found under the window icon in the left-hand corner. Once you're in Google, go ahead and start searching some of the web addresses like MyNSS or check your Mosaic back of the house access, right? Once you're in there, you may need to sign in with your CPS credentials one more time, but once you're signed into Google, that should kind of allow you to flow through the Google suite with your CPS credentials uh, along Mosaic, um, your Google account, your email address, your drive, uh, all in the same place. So here's a screenshot of the MyNSS screen. As you can see, there's Heartland Mosaic for the front of the house. That's where you're gonna go ahead and do your daily meal count forms. Here you got Mosaic back of the house, right? Here's where you're gonna go ahead and pull those recipes, menus, and uh, food production worksheets. You will be entering the bulk count into your Mosaic daily. You will also be required to fill out the food production worksheet daily. So let's take a look at how we make that happen. So it's a bunch of screenshots I'm gonna walk you through, okay? These slides will be made available for you, but please listen up closely so that you can see the process that you will need to do on a daily basis in completing your daily meal count form as well as your food production worksheet. So once you're logged into Mosaic front of the house, right? Don't confuse them. Back of the house is only for food production worksheets as well as your menus and recipes, but front of the house is where you'll actually enter your daily meal count form, okay? So on the left-hand side, you got end of day. Under end of day, you will go to the bulk entry form link. Bulk entry form will open up here. You'll get a list of a bunch of forms. We're looking to select the summer breakfast and summer lunch form. Once we double click on that link, it'll bring us here. Here you will select your school name and today's date, okay? As it is the serving date, as you are doing this on a daily basis. Once you get that filled out, you just wanna go ahead and click the word add at the bottom of the right hand of the screen here. Once that happens, you can confirm all of your information is correct. You're serving at Adams. Today's date is 5-2. This is all already pre-populated for you. You will have the breakfast section. From your breakfast grid sheets, go ahead and enter in that number. For this school, they were at two, right? And then you have your lunch form. And for this school, they were also at two for lunch. Once you enter in those counts, if you happen to have a lunch stop count, you would add it here you're gonna go ahead and just press finalize, okay? 
Once you click on the word finalize, you will get a couple of alert boxes, which you will just answer yes and okay to. Let me go through those alert boxes. Are you sure you want to save this bulk entry form? Yes. If cash was taken, you must reconcile, reconcile under end of day. Actual deposit and bank bag, if used, must be entered on the end of day close day screen. We aren't collecting any cash. So for this alert, all we allow you to do is select OK in order to continue on. Once you hit OK, that goes ahead. It processes your count, but it's not quite done just yet. You have to then close day. Luckily, once you go ahead and hit that screen, it'll take you right to this back to the end of day screen, which the first option and first link is close day. Under close day, you will find your school name for the appropriate serving date, which because we are in the habit of doing this on a daily basis will be today. You double click the actual date field. Once you do that, it kind of it shows you all the information that's already been entered. It'll probably show you as a user who entered it. And then you want to go ahead and click the words close day at the bottom right. And then that would have got you your account ready to go in front of the house. So let's go into the back of the house and quickly show you the uh, food production worksheets. Okay. If you need any help with this, Guess what? We have back of the house assistance in My NSS. So by going to the My NSS website, you can click on one of the training tabs and there will be several videos and training aids to help you with this. If you need further assistance on using back of the house or if you're having issues logging into the back of the house, please call the help desk at 339-25 and press option number four. So how do I get my food production worksheets, right? You're going to go ahead and click the word maintenance. It's the first link under menus. Then you're going to click the menu name. These will be assigned by your FSD. So if you're looking for a breakfast menu, you click breakfast, lunch, and so on and so forth. Once you do this, here is exactly what you will see, your copy of your menu, as well as your food production worksheet. You want to go ahead and click the words production quantities, which is the third option at the bottom of the screen. This will allow you to fill in your information of your forecast, prepared, served, and leftovers. Okay, so as you see here, all of the items are labeled on the left. The first box is for your forecast number. Your third box is for the prepared number. The fifth box is the number served. So really, if you take your total prepared, minus the number that was served will give you the total number of leftovers and waste. Okay. Couple of recap slides. When do you call your FSD? When do you call your FSM, right? If you have a field trip, whether or not you are providing meals for that field trip, we still need to know that kids will be out of the building, okay? Number one, I've already stated, most importantly, I just need to know your school name and the date of these field trips. If you happen to know the location and the number of students going, that would be great. If you get that information at a later date, please just go ahead and share it again with summer food services at cps.edu, as well as your FSD and FSM, okay? Another thing that you would have to reach out to them as well is another schedule change, meal times, right? These must be exact. If you are serving at 8.05, but if your service time is listed as 8.05, but you're really serving at 8 o'clock, it is important that we know that, okay? We just need to know the difference. It needs to be exact. We need to also know your start and end days and the days of the week that you are in service, okay? If you notice any strange pest activity in your area outside of anything normal, outside of anything that hasn't been reported, please go ahead and send that up to your FSD. If your school decides to serve in another building or another location, let us know, right? This is a big one. You know, a lot of times we serve in those branches and those modules, and we don't even know until later in the year, and you got an inspector showing up to the main building, and they're reporting back that nobody's there serving meals, okay? So we want to be sure to get on top of that. If the Chicago Department of Public Health shows up, you want to go ahead and let your FSD know, 
okay? And when you end up getting those results for your inspection, you also want to go ahead and share those with your FSD, okay? If you need proper tools to operate, for example, once again, coolers, ice blankets, knives, small wares, reach out to them as well for that. If you're having access with issues for mosaic, front of the house, back of the house, or your printer, first, you're going to go ahead and call the help desk, right? 339-25 and put in a ticket. Then you're going to alert your FSD and FSM about this, okay? If you're having food delivery issues, didn't get the correct quantity, got some spoiled items, bring that up to your FSD and FSM right away. If you want to report staffing issues, those need to go to your FSD right away as well. Some safety tips, right? So each school out there has a customized emergency, emergency management plan, right? Try to say that 10 times fast. And these emergency plans uh, include emergency protocols, contact information, communication procedures, and evacuation plans. Emergencies include situations as a school lockdown for whatever reason, natural disasters like a tornado or a fire, or allergies, airborne diseases, okay? How to stay safe this summer. If you are a witness to or are made aware of a threat or have any concerns, you need to notify the principal and the administration in charge right away. If the school administration deems that there's a safety risk, they will provide the directions to all the students and staff. Please keep a close ear, listen, and help. The school administration will address the situation and will engage any emergency responders, such as the Chicago police or the Chicago fire departments, when appropriate. Know your evacuation procedures at your school, okay? Know where you are assigned to work. Know where you are to go in the case of an emergency. Keep all school access points safe and secure, okay? This includes your kitchen, the lunchroom, your office, free of clutter. Make sure doorways and exits are free. All right, just a couple of best practices. Hang in here with me for a couple more minutes. Answer the next few questions. They're very simple, and you will be done with summer training, and you will be ready to be assigned to a school. All right. We need you to communicate. Stay in touch with the program leaders and the administrators, not just on the first day, but throughout the remainder of the summer. Report all your field trips using all the methods that we discussed to your FSD and FSM. Communicate any schedule changes immediately. May it be a five minute change or a, a different day of the week of service. Fill out the school name, the Oracle number, address, and phone number on the daily meal count form and make copies. This is one of the ways you work smarter and not harder, okay? Print off all your food production worksheets and recipes on Fridays for the next week. Usually, usually, I know there's no rest for some of you, but usually Fridays tend to be a little slower. So on a day like this, it can allow you some time to go ahead and get those food production worksheets and recipes printed out for the following week. Be sure to stay on menu as best as possible. Make sure that you're ordering the correct item so that you're staying on menu. This ensures that reimbursable meals are always served, right? It takes away the guessing of substitutions when you just have the appropriate food on hand. Follow those recipes, print those recipes, have them on hand. If you stray from the official recipe, you may be at risk of not meeting a federal state summer meal guideline. All right, there are certain things, certain measurements that we have to get perfect. Count reimbursable meals at the point of service only. You guys have seen several examples where that wasn't happening. We want to make sure to make this a better year, okay? So uh, please make sure that you're at the point of service when you're taking counts. Don't fall behind. I think I've said that a few times. There's plenty of daily tasks, okay, that you need to complete. That includes your food production worksheets. Entering all your meal counts, all of those temperature logs and sanitation log we talked about, all of these things are very important and need to be done on a daily basis. And with that, I want to thank you all very much. I'm hoping you guys have a great summer, not only working, but as well as personally. Um, definitely had a good time giving this training here. I'm really hoping you take something from it. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to your FSD or FSM. We will have this training available for you. Once again, thank you for giving me your time. At this time, you will be done with training. If you need a civil rights training, we will reach out to you. Most of you may have already been trained on this. 
uh, go ahead and complete the remainder of this form so that we can go ahead and receive your application. If you don't complete the rest of the form, we won't even know you want to work, okay? So make sure you go back to the form, complete the remaining questions, and submit. Thank you so very much. Hope you have a great day.